Hello everyone, my name is Joe Cook, and welcome back to FX Requests. I've been gone a little while, but as requested, in this episode, I'm going to show you how to make and use your own stock footage. Now in the time I've been gone, all I've been doing is making stock footage, and I've learned a couple of things. One, making stock footage is a lot of work. Two, making stock footage is a lot of fun. I have to say, after making the stuff, I understand why people sell it now, because making it is a lot of fun, and it's really rewarding to you, but giving it out for free must be heartbreaking. Now I figured the three most commonly pieces of used stock footage, at least on YouTube, are probably blood hits, explosions, and gunshots. So let's make our own. Now, if you've ever done any compositing work of your own or any kind of amateur special effects, you've probably come across stock footage before. But in case you have absolutely no idea what stock footage is, allow me to explain. Stock footage in this kind of base form, umbrella term, is just something you film not specifically for a video that you use in a later video down the line, or multiple videos down the line. Now, stock footage in terms of visual effects is usually something very cool, like an explosion or a gunshot, filmed on a keyable background, which is then keyed out and overlaid on footage, um, especially using amateur films where they can't have something like blanks being fired or pyrotechnics in their movie, just they need something quick that still looks good. And this is exactly that. Now, the three main types of keyable backgrounds that are used in stock footage and also will be most useful to you are a black background, a white background, and a blue or green screen. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Um, let's start with explosions. They're pretty cool, and everyone likes them. So first for the fireball. I found for my fireballs that if I took a balloon and filled it up with something flammable like hairspray or axe, um, and then dangled that balloon from a fishing wire off something and had a fuse in the bottom of it, lit the fuse and ran away, when the flame reached the balloon, the balloon would explode into a nice fireball. Now, I film all my stock footage at 1280p because I can get 60 frames a second on my camera, and I would suggest filming your stock footage at the highest frame rate possible, because with explosions, the larger they are, the slower moving everything is, because you think you have the same parts doing something on a much bigger scale, and they're not going to be moving at the same speed. If you watch an explosion that's really big, you're going to see the smoke and fire moving very slowly, so if you film your elements at higher frame rate, you can slow them down to simulate both small and big explosions. Whoa now! Hold on. I know I said explosions, and you're probably running outside right now to set some shit on fire. I don't blame you. Explosions are sweet. Except, the thing about explosions is they use fire. Didn't even know if you knew this about fire, but uh, fire burns things, like your face. So you should be wearing safety equipment of some kind. Please don't burn your face. And if you are planning on doing this without safety equipment, have a friend you don't like light the fuse. Because if they get burned, everyone wins. But seriously, don't burn anyone's face. And if you do, don't sue me. When filming these fireballs, I found it best to film them at night because, once again, everything's dark so you get this nice bright fire and also you don't have to pay for a black background. If you hang that fireball down or the balloon filled with hairspray down in front of a large space, the light doesn't travel that much in the back and you have a pre-keyable black background. It's perfect. Now you've got your sweet fireball filmed on the nice black background, we're going to go ahead and bring it over into After Effects. First off, if you have any spill on areas you don't want, go ahead and mask around just the fireball, feather out that mask and animate it to expand with the fireball, getting rid of the areas with the glow on them. Now, ordinarily with something filmed in a black background, if you use Detonation Films footage, you would go ahead and set that black background with a blending mode of screen and it would get rid of the black. Except, we're not compositing this to anything yet, we just want the stock footage. So, unfortunately, screen only uses a layer below it to make its alpha channel. So if you have something with a blending mode of screen with nothing else beneath it, then there's, there's nothing to key out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and download a free plugin for After Effects called Null Unmult, which is a great plugin, which essentially does the exact same thing as Screen, except it actually makes an alpha channel and uses it to key transparency. So once you've gone ahead and put Unmult on there, you should be able to toggle your transparency options and you'll see that you just have your fireball, no black background at all. Perfect. Now, the most important part of this, when you're rendering your clip from After Effects, in the output module settings, go ahead and change your channels from RGB to RGB plus alpha. This essentially allows you to render that clip with transparency in the background, so you don't have to go ahead and key it every single time you bring it into a clip. You should just have a nice fireball with nothing else, and you can just drag it on top of any footage you want and it'll show up perfectly. In fact, that goes for all these stock footage techniques we're going to be covering. Anytime you render your stock footage and you want it to be pre-keyed, make sure you change your channels from RGB to RGB plus alpha. Now, let's go ahead and start filming some smoke hits. So, 
The problem with smoke kits is that smoke is usually a mixture of white and black and gray, and the colors are between those. There's no color in smoke unless you use some kind of colored dust. So you can't really film it on a white screen, and you can't really film it on a black screen that well. So what I did with my smoke was I went ahead and filmed it on my green screen. Now, I would suggest bringing your green screen outside. One, because you get good lighting and you don't have to pay for it if you don't already have lighting gear. And two, because you're gonna be throwing smoke around or flour, as I'm using in this case, and I don't think you really want flour all over everything in your house. So, I'd film it outside. Now, for my smoke kits, what I did was I took a straw, I put some flour in the end of it, and then I took a can of compressed air from my mouth or an air compressor and just kind of ejected it out of the end of the straw. And it makes a nice kind of smoke puff and everything's pretty cool. While I was out there with my green screen, I took this thing I made, which is basically just a cheap trash can with the bottom cut out and some kind of like elastic bungee cord and a old, some kind of plastic container in the middle. And what I did was I would put pieces of dirt and some flour in there. And then from the bottom, I would reach up and just kind of fire this out on top of my green screen. And that could be used for kind of a dirt explosion or maybe just a kind of vertical smoke puff which is pretty cool. Once I had filmed my smoke and dirt footage on my green screen, I went ahead and brought them back into After Effects, then put the key light filter on and keyed out the green screen. Now, if you've never used key light before, uh, Video Copilot has a great tutorial on using it. Um, there's tons of them on the web, and I'm sure you can find one that'll do a much better job than I would do showing you how to use it. But I found that since smoke you know, has this kind of transparent effect to it anyway, I found that messing with these screen matte settings, especially the D-spot, softness, and black and white settings um, were really helpful in getting a nice clean kind of key on the smoke itself. Dirt wasn't so much of a problem, so you shouldn't have any problems with that. Again, once you're done with that, go ahead and render it out. Channel settings, RGB plus alpha. All right, now for our blood footage. The problem I had with this was I didn't have a white background like I do a green screen and at no point in the day is it really completely white outside. So what I did was I took some poster boards and I taped them to the front of cardboard boxes and made a kind of longish, but not too high, kind of white screen, essentially. Once I had my white screen set up, I went ahead and took some plastic tubing, put a little funnel on the end, and I filled it up with fake blood. If you don't know how to make some fake blood, I do cover it briefly in this episode of FX Quest right here. Once I had my tubing filled with fake blood, I simply made sure that the exposure settings on my camera were enough to where the screen was completely white, but I could still see red liquid against it. And then I took um, either an air compressor, a can of compressed air, or your mouth, and just blow that blood right out of the end. Make sure not to put too much fake blood in your tubing, or else it just kind of comes out in the jet, which isn't too realistic for the blood burst. Maybe a blood squirt would work, but I was trying to make bursts, so I found that putting just a small amount of fake blood in there, I was able to achieve the effect. Make sure that you're pointing horizontally along your screen so that the blood kind of ejects out and not up where it's not gonna be on your screen. And also make sure that you do a quick burst. Don't hold it down or else you will just kind of get a nice like spurting effect, but not really a burst, which is what I was aiming for. Okay, now we bring our blood effects footage into After Effects again. And go ahead and mask around your white screen enough to where you just have the white screen and the blood burst effect happening and then take your footage, and this time we're gonna use Null Unmult again, except we're gonna do something a little differently. Go up to Effects, Channel, Invert, which essentially switches all the colors. So you should have now a black background with some kind of blue blood instead of red blood on there. And now go ahead and apply the Null Unmult filter, which will get rid of the black there, and go back up to Effects, Channel, Invert again, and you should just have your red with the background keyed out. Once you're happy with your key, that's okay. Go ahead and render it out. Remember, output settings, change the channels to RGB plus alpha. Muzzle flashes can be tricky. Ideally, I'd like to just go out at night with a real gun and fire that real gun on the black background that is just night and mask and key out that gunshot and have a perfect muzzle flash right there. Except, I live in a rural neighborhood and uh, it's illegal to fire guns. Um, plus, it's dangerous. And, uh, you know, can't really do that. Don't want to go to prison. So, I found two unique solutions to this. One of them you can make by yourself without filming any other stock footage, and one of them you can actually take previously filmed stock footage and turn it into that. Method one, we earlier filmed some smoke footage on our green background, and with that keyed out, what I found is if you take two frames of that, one more at the beginning, and then the next frame after that, and go ahead and tint that kind of an orangey color, add a lot of glows, duplicate it, and blur the one behind it, and just have a quick flash like that, you have a pretty convincing gunshot. In fact, it looks 
almost exactly like the ones they did in Action Essentials 2. That's all fine, except uh, it's all done in the computer, and ideally I'd like to be able to do something with my camera that's you know, practical and fun to do. What I did was I took a piece of paper, and using pliers, I tore a kind of muzzle flash shape into the paper. And then behind that, I put a piece of plastic packaging, you know, the same kind we use for our lens filters in a couple episodes back in the FX request, and I just kind of took sandpaper and really sanded it up so that when I like, turned on a flashlight behind it quickly, you can see that the light is diffused nicely across that shape and it's isolated and masked just to the muzzle flash shape I took. I filmed this in complete blackness with my camera so that only the muzzle flash like area would show up and then again I just masked around it and keyed out the black using null unmult and rendered it with alpha and I had a pretty convincing looking gunshot. Now something I discovered that's really cool is that while I filmed things like the blood footage going one direction and it was just kind of a burst going from one side of the screen to the other, I found that once you have them pre-keyed you can combine multiple elements you filmed. So I could have two of the bursts having going both ways, which makes more of a realistic kind of front burst effect. I could put multiple different takes in there so I have more blood than I wanted or less blood, and I can control the different opacities, the uh, blending mode, to make really any kind of stock footage effect I want with that blood. And the same goes for fireballs. I know I have a small fireball explosion, but if I put lots of them around, I can make multiple explosions like a propane tank is going off or something. Again, it's all kind of down to your imagination and the effect you're trying to fill. And the same goes for smoke. I had smoke directions going from one to the other, which is good for exiting the barrel of a gun when doing a muzzle flash, but if you have an explosion, you don't really see kind of omnidirectional smoke. You have this kind of nice burst. So I took multiple ones, kind of kaleidoscoped them around so I had the same smoke burst going off at different kind of timings, added in some other ones, and you could make a nice kind of circular smoke burst, which can go along with a grenade explosion or something like that. And again, it's, it's a lot more efficient than just filming one element and only using it for what it is. You take them and you can make any amount of elements you want with that one. So now you have all your individual elements filmed. Now the thing is, if you're making some kind of explosion or a gunshot, you don't ever want to just have one element. You want to have multiple elements working together to create the effect. So if I was doing a gunshot, I would have the muzzle flash that we made, um, footage put on top of my gunshot and then behind that I'll have one of my smoke bursts and maybe um, another kind of light burst I put in in After Effects and again I would take some shells and film them on a green screen and have them ejecting out of the side and I would just really use all the elements I have to combine to create an effect. And think of these stock footage things you're filming as little pieces in a jigsaw puzzle and you don't want to just have one piece and say you're done. You got to put multiple pieces together and eventually when you have enough pieces in the right places you're going to have a nice picture that you can see. That's it for this episode guys, I'd like to thank you for watching. I've gone ahead in the description, I've put a link where you can download some raw files of stock footage I filmed and some pre-keyed ones. Uh, ideally, I'd like you guys to go out and film your own, since that's the point of the episode. But I understand that not everyone can with the circumstances I've given. Maybe you live in a place where you just don't have anywhere to film, where you can't get some of the stuff where you live. So, I've given you some freebies. Go ahead and use them wherever you want. Uh, if you want to give credit, that's fine. If not, I don't really care. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you really like it, add your favorites. Share it with your friends, whatever you want to do. Um, I'd like to thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe if you'd like. If not, that's okay. Just thank you for watching. Bye.